on World News Tonight. State of Emergency. Cyclone Gabriel makes landfall in New Zealand, lashing out Auckland, leaving many without power. Holding out hope. There are stunning new rescues in Turkey, but that does not cut out the rising death toll. Ruling out aliens. The US shoots down yet another flying object, which the fourth in just over a week. Diamond in the sky. Rihanna wows Super Bowl in all red ensemble as she makes a grand return to the stage. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News this Monday night. We have updates from the Turkey-Syria earthquake to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But we start off tonight with Cyclone Gabriel that lashed the north of New Zealand, leaving some 46,000 homes without power. Authorities have issued warnings of heavy rain and winds and hundreds of flights have been cancelled. Some areas have declared a state of emergency as Gabriel nears the North Island. It comes weeks after Auckland and surrounding areas were hit by record rainfall that sparked floods and killed four people. Emergency Management Minister Kieran McAnulty told media briefings on Monday that the government is considering declaring a national state of emergency for only the third time in the country's history. A state of emergency has already been declared in five northern regions, including Auckland. The declaration gives local authorities greater power to respond to dangerous situations and allows them to restrict travel and provide aid. Many schools and local government facilities across Auckland and the North Island have closed and people are being asked not to travel if possible. Meanwhile, some 10,000 international air news Zealand customers were disrupted by the cancellation of 509 flights. The earthquake death toll in Turkey and Syria has now surpassed 35,000 and is expected to climb further. The white helmets are working day and night, with some lucky enough to be saved even after six days. Authorities are also concerned over the safety of survivors, with infectious diseases spreading. Miraculous rescues are still being reported almost a week after the initial earthquake. However, the death toll continues to climb in Turkey and Syria, as the figure has now surpassed 34,000 following two massive earthquakes last Monday. The earthquake is now the sixth deadliest natural disaster reported in the 21st century. Authorities say some 30,000 people have been killed in Turkey, while Syria reported over 4,000 deaths. However, the WHO says the death toll from Syria may be much higher than what is being reported and predicts some 9,300 people have been killed in the country. Meanwhile, those that survived the devastation of the earthquake are facing other major issues, namely the spread of infections and cold temperatures. Experts have warned that bodies trapped in rubble could contaminate drinking water. They added that at refugee camps, there are few places with properly equipped toilets, so hygiene issues are also a concern. Looting is also becoming a problem as dozens of looters were arrested in hard-hit areas while rescue operations were halted due to safety concerns. Austrian, German and Israeli rescue teams halted rescue operations due to aggressive actions from unnamed groups. Subsequently, the Austrian team resumed their work under the protection of the Turkish military. Recent analysis also showed that another earthquake with a magnitude of 7.0 or greater could strike Turkey and Syria. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, there is a 10 percent chance that an aftershock of 7.0 or greater could strike the region again. It also gave a 1 percent chance of an earthquake with a magnitude greater than 7.8. It also adjusted up the probability that the total death toll from the earthquake will surpass 100,000 to 26 percent. Now, Turkey is discussing a reopening of a border crossing into Syrian government territory, enabling earthquake aid to be sent directly to areas under President Bashar al-Assad's control after a decade of enmity. It is also looking at opening another crossing into Syria's opposition-held Idlib region. Driving from Turkey into northern Syria, these trucks are bringing blankets and other supplies to build emergency shelters to an area in desperate need of aid. A week after it was hit by a catastrophic earthquake, Syria has received only a fraction of the aid it needs. The delay has partly been caused by approval issues, as several rebel groups that control northern Syria have so far largely rejected help from Bashar al-Assad's government. Relations between Damascus and Ankara also remain tense, 
more than a decade after the countries severed diplomatic ties and mutually closed off their borders. The only way to reach affected areas in the north has therefore been through a single border crossing with Turkey, severely hampering relief efforts. Hoping to break the deadlock, a UN envoy called on all parties to set their differences aside in order to reach those in need. Hoping to speed up the delivery of aid, the United Nations wants to open two additional border points between Turkey and rebel-held territories in the north, while Ankara said last week it was willing to open a direct border crossing with areas controlled by the Syrian government. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has stated while inaugurating the Aero India show that India wants to more than triple annual defense exports to $5 billion by 2024 to 2025 from $1.5 billion currently as it looks to ramp up domestic manufacturing. For more details on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent, Gayathri Gunasekhar, joining us now from Delhi in India. Gayathri? Yes, Sanradi. India is looking to sign defense deals worth 750 billion rupees at the Binayal Day, a five-day event, its biggest ever, as its airlines try to compete jetliner purchases to meet civilian demand and press global aircraft manufacturers to produce more locally, mainly through partnerships. PM Modi added that India, for decades one of the world's biggest importers of defense equipment, now exports to 75 countries. Fast Indian exports include Hindustan Aeronautics drove helicopters to Philippines, uh, Ma Mauritius and Ecuador uh, and Russia-India venture Barmos Aerospace's supersonic uh, cruise missiles to Philippines. Sharing borders with the nuclear-armed rivals China and Pakistan, India's Soviet-era Air Force fleet is in desperate need of modernizing. Suppliers in the European Union and the United States have been lobbying for a bigger share of the market. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has made it imperative for India to further diversify its supply base amid fears of US sanctions, possible Russian supply disruption and Western pressure on New Delhi to limit ties with Moscow. India's airlines are also expanding with Tata Group's Air India expected to announce a potential record deal to buy nearly 500 jets from Airbus and Boeing worth uh, more than uh, 100 billion US dollars at list prices. Back to you, Anradi. All right, thank you. That was other than a World News Special Correspondent Gayatri Gunasekar reporting from Delhi in India. Polish President Andrzej Duda said in a conference that Russia may win the conflict in Ukraine if the Kiev government isn't supplied with Western weapons in the coming weeks. During an interview, Duda was asked if he thought the Russians could achieve victory in Ukraine. Though Russia may be gaining on Ukrainian troops holding out in the besieged city, Russian casualties are at their highest since the first weeks of the war, according to Ukraine, that is. His comments didn't go unnoticed by Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zharakova, who took to Telegram on Sunday to point out that even if Western weapons are supplied to Ukraine hurriedly, they won't be able to change the outcome of the conflict. On the other hand, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said that U.S. officials are basically admitting that they were behind the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines, which were perpetrated to prevent rapprochement between Moscow and Berlin. Russia's Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zarakova said late on Saturday that NATO is to hold an emergency meeting to discuss recent findings about September explosions at the Nord Stream gas pipelines. The comments made by Russia's top diplomat comes just days after iconic American investigative journalist Seymour Hersh released a bombshell report blaming Washington for sabotaging the Nord Stream pipelines last year. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. Around one million people in France took to the streets in opposition to plans by President Emmanuel Macron to reform the country's pension system. Demonstrations, some of them turning violent, happened in Paris, Nice, Marseille, Toulouse, Nantes, as well as other cities. Across France, hundreds of thousands of people demonstrate seeking to keep up pressure on the government over its pension reform plans, which include a move to raise the retirement age from 62 to 64. In a joint statement ahead of Saturday's marches, all the main unions called for the government to withdraw the bill. Nurse Delphine Maisonneuve, 
was among the protesters. I think this is the comeuppance for the government's indifference, meaning if they're not able to listen to what's happening on the streets and are not able to realise what is happening with the people, well, they shouldn't be surprised that it blows up at some point. The French spend the largest number of years in retirement among OECD countries, a benefit which, opinion polls show, a substantial majority of people are reluctant to give up. Early estimates show that protest numbers have increased in Paris by about 20% from the last march on Tuesday. This is according to French newspaper Le Figaro. Unions were hoping for a huge turnout and to draw people from all ages and backgrounds to show the government that the anger against the reform runs deep. But President Emmanuel Macron says the changes are vital to ensuring the viability of the pension system. According to Labour Ministry estimates, raising the retirement age by two years and extending the pay-in period would yield an additional 17.7 billion euros or 19.18 billion dollars in annual pension contributions. This would allow the system to break even by 2027. But unions say there are other ways to do this, such as taxing the super rich or asking employers or well-off pensioners to contribute more. They warned that they would seek to bring France to a standstill from March 7th if their demands were not met. A strike is already scheduled for February 16th. Iran marked the 44th anniversary of the Iranian Revolution with state-organized rallies as anti-government hackers briefly interrupted a televised speech by President Ibrahim Raisi. President Raisi appealed to the deceived youth to repent so they can be pardoned by Iran's supreme leader. Iranian television showed sweets being handed out to people as they marked the 44th anniversary of Iran's Islamic Revolution. Images were shown of rallies taking place nationwide and people carrying placards with portraits of Iran's supreme leader Ali Khamenei and the late Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini, founder of the Islamic Republic. Among the placards were ones reading, We Stand to the End and Down with the USA. The president, Ebrahim Raisi, addressing crowds in Tehran's Freedom Square, referred to the last five months of anti-government protests as a project by Iran's enemies. His government dismisses them as riots. The military put on a power display of its ballistic missile and drone technology. However, some of the coverage was disrupted. A web TV service affiliated with Iranian state television was briefly hacked. A 44-second video published on Twitter invited people to take part in nationwide protests next week and urged Iranians to withdraw their money from their banks. Activists say more than 500 people have been killed and 19,600 detained in a crackdown during protests since September. Anger was sparked by the death in detention of 22-year-old Masa Amini. She was held by the country's morality police. State media last week said authorities have ordered an amnesty or reduction in sentences for tens of thousands of people held, acknowledging the scale of the crackdown for the first time. Now, U.S. authorities shot down a fourth unidentified flying object over North American airspace over the weekend and are now on the hunt for debris. They have not commented on whether the object is from China. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Sunday said investigators are hunting for the wreckage of the mysterious flying object shot down by the U.S. over Yukon territory. Yesterday, NORAD confirmed um, that an unidentified object uh, entered unlawfully Canadian airspace. Uh, it represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft, uh, so I gave the order to take it down. The object was spotted by NORAD, or the North American Aerospace Defense Command, and shot down by an American F-22 fighter jet. U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer on Sunday told that national security officials believed the object, as well as the prior one shot down over Alaska on Friday, were both balloons. He added that they were much smaller than the balloon that was shot down off the coast of South Carolina last Saturday, which American officials believe was deployed by China for the purpose of surveillance. China's government has said it was a civilian research vessel that went off course and has condemned its destruction. 
The White House on Sunday said only that the recently downed objects did not closely resemble the Chinese balloon, but echoed Schumer's description of them as being much smaller. In the meantime, surveillance fears may be making officials jumpy. Twice in 24 hours, U.S. officials closed airspace only to reopen it swiftly. On Sunday, the Federal Aviation Administration briefly closed space above Lake Michigan. On Saturday, the U.S. military scrambled fighter jets in Montana to investigate a radar anomaly there. NORAD later said the pilots did not identify anything corresponding to the radar hits. We have some good news for you. Pancreatic cancer is difficult to detect early, and for more than 80% of patients, it's too late to operate. A South Korean research team has become the first in the world to successfully develop a system that classifies pancreatic cancer according to its cause, which promises to be a big help in diagnosis and treatment. Pancreatic cancer is difficult to diagnose early with ultrasound and blood tests because the pancreas is located deep inside the body. Also, many pancreatic cancer patients don't show symptoms until the cancer has grown and spread to nearby blood vessels and organs. The five-year survival rate for all cancer patients in South Korea is 71.5 percent, while pancreatic cancer has a survival rate of only 15.2 percent. This is because most patients aren't diagnosed until the cancer is inoperable. It's also because the exact cause of pancreatic cancer isn't identified, and patients are administered anti-cancer drugs that prove ineffective. South Korean researchers have become the first in the world to succeed in classifying pancreatic cancer into six types based on cause, which makes it possible to develop customized treatments. After analyzing the genetic proteome of cancer tissue and blood samples obtained from 150 actual pancreatic cancer patients, scientists found that the genes and signaling pathways that cause the disease differ according to six types. The research team also verified through animal experiments that each type of pancreatic cancer has different causes and characteristics. According to their analysis, among the six types, the one with the worst treatment prognosis has high cancer cell proliferation and high metastasis, and its survival rate is one-third lower than types whose prognosis would be considered good. The research team transferred the pancreatic cancer classification technology to a growing small business so it can be used in the medical field and hope to develop customized treatments tailored to each subtype. Welcome back, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Chiefs fans in Kansas City celebrated their side Super Bowl 57 win over the Philadelphia Eagles. Patrick Mahomes led the Kansas City Chiefs to a dramatic 38-35 win over the Philadelphia Eagles to claim their second Super Bowl in four years. Pakistan's Navy held counter-terrorist at drills just off the coast of Port City of Karachi as part of a series of multinational maritime exercises held biannually. China, Australia, Russia, Turkey and Sri Lanka among the near 50 countries in attendance of this year's exercises, dubbed ANAN-23, which feature warships, aircrafts and special operation forces. Facebook parent Meta has delayed finalizing the budgets of multiple teams as it prepares a fresh round of job cuts. The company announced 11,000 cuts in November. Alfa Tauri showed off their new Formula One car library on Saturday at New York's Lincoln Center during Fashion Week to promote the clothing brand of the Red Bull Energy Drink Company. Toss now the second longest serving F1 team principal said he expected the field to be closer this season and De Vries to waste no time in getting up to speed. Israel's President Isaac Herzog floated a compromise plan to spare the country what he described as a constitutional collapse and possible violence over a contested judicial overhaul sought by the hard-right government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The South Korean automaker Hyundai Motor Group announced that from 2014 to January this year, its three brands, Hyundai, Genesis and Kia, had together sold over 104,000 electric vehicles in the States. And that is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you missed any of the stories tonight, you can always watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. We leave you tonight with pop and R&B superstar Rihanna making a grand return to the stage, floating high above the Super Bowl field, thrilling the crowd with a fast-paced medley of her hits and revealing that she is pregnant with her second child. 
Thank you for watching. Have a great night.